Mima oglala lakota na jaktova dakota. A mi čaže ke ojate wachinopi. My name is Russell Means. I'm an Oglala Sioux Indian from the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation. And I live in Porcupine on that reservation. The thing I'd like to talk about first is our international state of emergency on the reservation. I come from a nation of people called the Lakota and Dakota and Nakota. Right now, we have nine Sioux Indian reservations in South Dakota and other reservations that are affected by the 1868 and 1851 treaty in Nebraska and Montana and North Dakota. That treaty is backed up by Article 6 of the United States Constitution and hasn't been lived up to for over 155 years. The situation of my nation is that the average age of a fluent Lakota speaker is 65 years of age. 65. And our life expectancy for a woman is 52 years, and our life expectancy for an adult male Lakota is 43.9 years and probably lower. We have, of the males, we have the shortest life expectancy in the world when you extrapolate uh, AIDS. When you include AIDS, we have the Ninth, there's only eight countries with the lower life expectancy than us when you include AIDS. And all eight are in Africa. It is a state of emergency. We are forced into the commodity food program of the agriculture department, which is mostly high sodium and uh, starchy foods which feeds into our diet, which demands that we become uh, guaranteed alcoholics through diet and subsequently sugar di uh, diabetes. Diabetes, as you know, is a triangular affliction. Bad heart, high blood pressure and sugar diabetes. Most sugar diabetics uh, die of heart, heart, heart disease, heart failure. We have the major diseases. Polio is back. TB is back. That's non-existent in the rest of America. All the other diseases we have are at epidemic proportions. We're losing our land. We're losing our water. We're losing our children. We're losing our children, at minimum 25% of our children are lost as soon as they're born. And I don't mean to death, I mean they're taken from us. One out of every four, that's genocide. All these factors are genocide, pure and simple. We don't have any power except through tribal government. We don't have any individual power. And that's what has to be addressed. The Constitution of the United States, again I say, has to be addressed. I don't believe it will. I don't believe any of you will address it. The existence of the American Union in, in, in this country is futile, always has been, and continues to get worse. If we lose our language, we lose, as a black woman in the eastern part of the United States stated last year, 
What the white man did to us was he took the taste out of our mouths. When we lose our language, that's what happens. We lose the taste. We lose our worldview. We lose the essence of being Lakota. That is more important than all the other statistics of genocide and deprivation is our language. And we want to do it our way, not the government way, not the tribal council way. We want you to rid us of the colonial apparatus that you have. And the way to do that, I believe, is to appoint someone from within your democratic structure that has it right here and right here, and it's connected. I could recommend someone, but I feel that with my reputation, it'd be a detriment to recommend someone. So, <clears throat> I, I actually do not believe in the United States government anyway. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. And save my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, all of which are, are in existence right now, and then my great-great-grandchildren. Prove me wrong. Another way you can do it is for the reestablishment of the Indian Policy Review Commission, which was back in the 70s when that beautiful individual, Senator Abrask, chaired it and found out everything you need to know what I'm saying today, and yet it wasn't established. So we need it renewed so that you can verify what he's already done. That's what's needed in this country. We are people out of sight, out of mind, for a reason. Because we are the evidence of the Western Hemisphere. And every time you all see us, you have that guilt feeling way deep inside. And that's why we're out of sight, out of mind. And every program you have is designed to get the Indian people off of their land. Everything, from the tribal governments to everything else. That's all I have to say. <laughs>